Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the pelvis and the upper femora. And in particular, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the pelvis and the upper femora. When we talk about the pelvis, the pelvis consists of four bones. You've got a right and a left innominate or hip bone, a sacrum, and a coccyx. And the pelvis serves as the base for the trunk and a girdle for the lower limb attachment. The pelvic girdle consists of only the two hip bones. The other names uh, for the hip bones are oscoxae and innominate. And each bone has three parts, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. These three bones come together to form what is termed the acetabulum, which is a cup-shaped socket that articulates with the head of the femur and accommodates the head of the femur. The ilium consists of a body and a broad curved portion called the ala or ala. The body forms the superior two-fifths of the acetabulum. So if you were to take the acetabulum, and to dissect it almost into the shape of the letter Y, the top of the letter Y, two-fifths of that, would be the acetabulum. Ilium has four prominent processes. You've got the anterior superior iliac spine. I'd like you to identify that on the drawing. It would be on the right side of the drawing. Below that, you've got the anterior inferior iliac spine. This is a boning process that is not palpable. We can use the identifying letters A, I, I, S. And then if we go to the back of the bone, we've got the posterior superior iliac spine. This would be on the left-hand side of the drawing. That's the P, S, I, S. And then below that, we've got the posterior inferior iliac spine, or PIIS. The superior margin of the ilium is termed the iliac crest, and the posterior inferior part ends in what is termed the greater sciatic notch. Let's move on to the ischium, which is in purple. It consists of a body and the ischial ramus. And the body forms the posterior two-fifths of the acetabulum. So remember the superior two-fifths was the ilium. Now we've got the posterior two-fifths being the uh, ischium. There's a ridge of bone termed the ischial ramus. If you can identify that on the drawing, it would be most inferior. It joins with the inferior ramus of the pubis. The ischial tuberosity is the expanded portion on which the trunk rests when seated. You've got the ischial spine, which is located on the upper posterior part of the body. You can see it's almost a little bony process that comes out. And then you've got the lesser sciatic notch, which is an indentation that is just below the ischial spine. Move on to the pubis. The pubis consists of a body, the superior ramus, and the inferior ramus. So I'd like you to identify that on the drawing. Notice the pubis, superior ramus, that ridge of bone, and then the inferior ramus, another ridge of bone. And the body of the pubis forms approximately one-fifth of the anterior acetabulum. So of the acetabulum, we've got two-fifths being the ilium, two-fifths the ischium, and one-fifth the pubis. The opening in the pelvis, in the inferior part of the pelvis on each side, is the obturator foramen. Obturator foramen, of course, would be plural. It's formed by the junction of the ischial ramus and the pubis, its inferior ramus. Let's take a look at the hip bone now collectively. And let's just go around. If we start up at the top, 12 o'clock, we've got the 
iliac crest, the anterior superior iliac spine, below that the anterior inferior iliac spine, the body of the ilium, the acetabulum, the body of the pubis, the superior ramus of the pubis, the opening, the obturator for ramen, the inferior ramus of the pubis, the ischial ramus, the ischial tuberosity, the lesser sciatic notch, the ischial spine, the body of the ischium, the greater sciatic notch, the posterior inferior iliac spine, and the posterior superior iliac spine. Here we have an image of the proximal femur, the head of which would fit into the acetabulum. Then we have the neck of the femur and the two trochanters, the greater and the lesser trochanter. And anteriorly, which is what we're looking at here, is the intratrochanteric line. Uh, this is a ridge of bone between the two trochanters. Remember, posteriorly, it would be the intratrochanteric crest. For the joints of the pelvis, the SI joints, the sacroiliac joints, these are the articulations on each side between the right and the left ilia and the uh, sacrum. They are irregular gliding types of joints. We've got the hip joints, which are the articulation of the head of the femora with the acetabula. These are synovial ball and socket type joints. And then we've got the pubic symphysis, which is a junction of both the right and the left pubic bones in the midline anteriorly. And this pubic symphysis is a cartilaginous, slightly movable joint, uh, becomes important in childbirth uh, when the pubic symphysis has to uh, stretch a little bit to accommodate the head of the fetus passing through the birth canal. There are some gender differences in the pelvic anatomy. For males, the pelvis is heavier, narrower, and deeper. And the angle at the pubic symphysis is an acute angle, that pubic arch. It's uh, less than 90 degrees, so it is an acute angle. Whereas in females, the, the pelvis is wider, it's shallower, it's lighter. And the angle at the pubic symphysis is an obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees.